Dear students, welcome to the video tutorial on procedural model of library automation. So far we have discussed what is library automation, how library automation process progressed over the last 5 decades and in this particular procedural model of library automation, we will be trying to explore the internal architecture and model available with each and every library automation process. And this particular model is basically software independent and library independent. That means library of any type of size may adapt this model and library automation of any generation fast through fifth generation may adapt this model. In fact, most of the library automation software nowadays are using this particular model which is known as procedural model of library automation. It is basically a software independent process driven model of library automation. But before that, we need to know what is a system and whether a library is a system or not. A system as you know, it is basically a set of interacting components which operate within a boundary for the purpose of achieving an objective or a common aim. The most important thing is uh, the phrase is the interactive component. A particular system has many sub components and all components interact with each other to achieve a particular goal and all component along with the system as a whole operate within a boundary. Now the boundary of a system filters interaction between the input output between a system and its environment. Say for example, if a library walks within a particular periphery, say a central library of a particular university, the immediate environment of that library are different departments, the university as a whole, the campus, the students and the members of the libraries. So if it can interact with that particular environment, it is considered as an open system. So there are mainly two sets of system. One is the open system which accepts input from the environment and one is the closed system which do not interact with the environment. In simple words, we can say library as an information system performs data to information processing activities. Now let us check how a library can be considered as a system. There are different kind of systems, uh, mostly in case of uh, information processing domain, we have computer system, we have information system. But a library is basically a type of information system which works as an organized and interacting manner and through an independent and integrated set of components. For example, a library, a central library or a college library has different other sub components like cataloging section, acquisition section reference section, circulation sections and you see all this works in tandem and their objectives to, to achieve the objective of the central library. So they work independently but in an interactive manner. So library is typically uh, is an information system which has definite objectives and goal and environment plays a significant role in the design and performance of an information system like library system because the development of any library depends again on the, uh, the environment within which it operates. So if we go for an analysis of different components, their job requirements, their uh, you know different kind of uh, activities, how they are linked with each other, if we can analyze those things then we can have a system analysis approach for library automation. And until and unless you do a thorough system analysis, a, th a thorough you know, uh, understanding of the processes occurring within the library system, you cannot automate your library system. So you, you, even you cannot write a software uh, for automating the uh, library automation processes. I hope you understand that until and unless you go for a set of activities to analyze different components their objectives, their nature of work, their interaction level, their interaction interfaces, you cannot go for writing or implementing a library automation package. And this thing, uh, these activities may differ from 
one library to another library, but there is a set of common things which are actually unique for each and every library system. It can be of any type or it can be of any size. Now you see the a library system is basically meant for handling resources, for processing resources and at the end of the day you need to deliver those resources for your end users. So, these are working through different subsystems and components. You need to have a solid planning, you need to have a control and you need to have a feedback mechanism to improve the library system as an information system. Now, in this particular tutorial, we would like to explore whether there is an internal mechanism through which we can analyze and we can conclude a set of components, a set of subsystem, a set of procedures, a set of activities and a set of task for completion of different requirements of library automation. So, that is our actually target area in this particular tutorial. Let us say a library system as we discussed earlier has two subsystem. One is the administrative subsystem, another is the operational subsystem. And you can easily understand you cannot automate the process of administration because administration involves a uh, lot of decision takings in real time. So, a computer cannot help you there to take decision on behalf of you. We need to take decision as administrator, but whether our decision is right or whether we are able to take right decision at the right time depends on number of data, records, reports and statistics. In fact, the other system of the library operational subsystem may provide a wholesome management information system to library managers. That means, there are two basic systems in a library. One is the operational subsystem, one is the administrative subsystem. You, we cannot automate administrative subsystem because it requires a lot of decision taking. But we can automate operational subsystem and operational subsystem on the other hand can produce lot of data, report and statistics to provide administrator opportunities to take right decision at the right time. I hope it is clear to you now. now if we, uh, if, uh, if these two are the, uh, you know, basic uh, subsystems of the libraries, we can develop a model uh, which was first proposed by P.A. Thomas in an analytical study of library automation conducted by Aslip way back in 1974. And this fact is amazing, the 1974 that uh, P.A. Thomas of Aslip given us a model which holds true till date in case of web enabled library automation also. And you will be amazed to know uh, the simplicity as well as the comprehensive nature of that particular model because it is basically working for the successfully for the last 5 decades. And almost all library automation softwares are based on this particular model. Now, what is the uh, you know basic things of the model? He clearly said that operational subsystem in a library can be automated because these are based on a definite set of uh, you know uh, activities, a definite set of goals and these are basically amenable to computerization. He proposed an operational subsystem of a library can have four subsystems. These four subsystem can you know uh, perform through 18 procedures. Each of these procedures can be performed through six possible activities and each of the activities can be performed through a set of 15 basic tasks. Now you see this model beautifully analyzed the whole library operational subsystem into its atomic structure. It clearly says there are four subsystems, 18 procedures, six activities and 15 tasks. Now what is automation? Automation is nothing. The moment you are actually getting a clear picture of this four subsystem, 18 procedures, 6 activities and 15 basic tasks, the software can be easily written to automate the processes related with this. That means, four subsystem, 18 procedures, 6 activities, 15 basic tasks. This is the beauty of the model. It actually reduce the entire library operation into a set of 
mathematical functions, 4 subsystem, 18 procedures, 6 activities, 15 tasks. So, almost all library automation softwares, you know, uh, readily adapted this particular model to develop different modules and how modules can be interlinked with each other are also based on this particular model. Now, if you have a look into this particular structure, the library housekeeping operation, there are four subsystem, acquisition subsystem, which actually selects a book, then place order for a particular book, receive the ordered book and finally accession that particular book. Now, the moment accession is over, the job of acquisition subsystem is over. It transferred that particular book to the processing section. Now, processing section is another subsystem under uh, housekeeping or operational subsystem. First, it classify that particular book, then it catalog the book, label the book, shelf the book. After shelving the factory is over, the book came into the, you know, uh, the main stack of the library. So, use function started. So, this is the another subsystem of the library use. It involves many kind of service interfaces with the end user that is the to list, to locate, to lend, to reserve, to recall, interlibrary loan, repographic services. These are the activities associated with the use function. Then, you know, with the use in case of open access library system where user can go to the stack, pick up the book, read a book, place that book on, on the table. Easily, if you do not maintain your stack, it will become unusable. It cannot serve your end user if you uh, regularly not, you know, go for the stock rectification and uh, proper placing of the documents. So, another, uh, you know, uh, subsystem that is the maintenance subsystem is also working in the housekeeping zone. That means the operational subsystem. Maintenance includes three major activities, binding a book which is damaged by uh, warranteer, then replace the book if it is lost and discard the book. Time to time you need to weed out your collection. Say for example, you have uh, you know, five different editions of Encyclopedia Britannica and it occupies a huge space in your library. So, you need to weed out the older versions or older editions of that those particular book. You need to weed out the books which are not used in for the last five or six years. Definitely by following different procedures available in your library, but you need to weed out book documents regularly. So, these are the you know four subsystems available under operational subsystem of the library. And you see the selection, ordering, receiving, accessing, classifying, these are all regular and repetitive job and thereby completely amenable for computerization. Similarly, in the other two section, to list, to locate, to lend, to reserve, these are also routine clerical processes occurring in each and every library and again amenable for computerization. That was the beauty of the model. It actually identifies the activities which requires automation place those activities under different uh, you know subsystem and then propose this subsystem should be automated. Now, if we go into a uh, step ahead that what are the procedures, uh, basically P.A. Thomas advocated at, uh, a total of 18 procedures and he also said that 18 procedures can be performed in terms of 6 possible activities. Here you please mind the possible activities. That means, he said that there are six activities initiate, authorize, activate, record, report and cancel, but it is not mandatory that each procedure is supported by all these six activities. That means, for each and every activity there will not be the report generation function, there may not be the cancel function, but initiation, authorization and activation is basically are three required elements from the six possible activities. Every time you do not need to record or report or cancel. So, uh, the term is very clear that each procedure, each given procedure like say for example, selection or ordering can be performed through six possible activities and every time you do not need to follow all the six possible activities. It can be at the least three or it can be at the best six. Now, uh, 
if we want to define the possible activities which was proposed by uh, P. A. Thomas, so there are six, initiate, that means you need to start or uh, you know uh, initiate a particular process related to a procedure. Say for example, you want to place order of a book, so that means you need to start listing the uh, selected books, then you need to authorize it, that means you need uh, need to have approval uh, for placing the order. So, this is the thing, first you need to select a book, then you need to take uh, you know approval or authorization from the competent authority. So, in this way he defined actually six activities to initiate, to authorize, to activate, to record, to report and if requires to cancel. So, these six activities are actually performing the 18 procedures. Now, the whole thing will be clear to you through this particular table. Say for example, if we see this particular table, here you see library as a system, then it has two basic subsystem, operational subsystem and administrative subsystem. I already told you administrative subsystem cannot be automated. So, what remains is the operational subsystem. In the operational subsystem, again there are four basic subsystem, acquisition subsystem, processing subsystem, use subsystem and maintenance subsystem. These four subsystems are supported by 18 procedure. In the acquisition level, we have select, order, receive, accession. Processing, we have classify, catalog, label, self. Use, we have locate, list, lend, that means issue, reserve, recall, that means return, interlibrary loan and photography or reprographic services. In the maintenance, we have bind, replace and discard. Now, all these 18 procedure can be completed, each of these can be completed through six possible activities, initiate to start the process, authorize to get approval or to take approval for a particular process, activate you need to start the process. Say for example, you are ordering a book, you are placing order to the vendor, that is the activation. Then you need to record because you sometimes you need to report. For reporting purposes, you need to record each and every activity in the library system. Then on the basis of that report, uh, sometimes a user may ask you that what happened uh, 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 about the book or what happened, what I uh, uh, submitted the requisition for it. So, there you have to report whether it is in the ordering process or order has already been placed or you have re already received the thing. So, this is the importance of the uh, recording of each activity or each procedure uh, associated with the activity. Now, sometimes you need to cancel also, say for example, you placed uh, already placed order uh, with a vendor for a book and then you found that the book is already available in the library. So, again you need to place an or cancellation of that order with the vendor. So, sometimes cancellation may also occur, but as I said that all these six uh, possible activities are not mandatory to perform a particular uh, procedure. So, how this particular uh, you know mechanization of the system, subsystem, operational subsystem, procedure, activities and stocks are handled by the automation process. A library automation process on the basis of this model divided the whole software package into number of modules for operational subsystem. You remember the acquisition sub, uh, subsystem and there is a module in most of the library automation system called acquisition. You remember the use sub, uh, subsection that is uh, how to locate, lend, issue, return, etc. So, all these are actually managed in a package by two different modules. One is the circulation module, another is the OPEC module. So, in a uh, nutshell, I can say that the entire library automation package are divided into number of related modules on the basis of the four subsystems and 18 procedures. Sub modules are performing basically the activities. Say for example, acquisition module may again have different sub modules, uh, development of the master vendor list, development of the budget, then uh, you know uh, placement of the order, receiving of items and finally, accessing of the items. So, these are all sub modules related to the acquisition main module. 
and there are number of facilities associated with the sub modules. That means, how you perform a particular job. There are only 15 basic tasks available with this uh, particular software scenario. So, on the basis of this model, we can say that all these 18 procedures, 6 activities and 15 tasks are performed through modules, sub modules and facilities in a library automation system. Now, in that particular uh, scenario, if we take into account the all possible 6 activities there, you can see that all the 5th generation library automation packages made them web enabled. That means, now it does not matter whether your staff uh, you know uh, allotted a the responsibility of a particular module is available in the office or not. Suppose he is uh, uh, away from the office attending some conference or seminars, if uh, you know uh, uh, it is required, then he or she can logged into the system, change different kind of procedural uh, you know uh, requirements, requirements related to activities and finally, end up with Configuring, configuring the system in a different mode. So, as a whole we can say that uh, in, uh, right from the third generation ILS to fifth generation ILS all are based on this atomic structure proposed by the PA uh, Thomas. All the four uh, operational subsystems are reflected in modules, may not be in four modules, it may be divided into eight or uh, nine modules but basically those are there are four modules and each module is subdivided into sub modules depending on the procedures performed by each of these subsystems and functionalities of each sub modules achieved through a set of basic possible activities and there are six possible activities as per the proposition of P. A. Thomas. Till date this model is quite successful in development of different library automation system, whether it is client server architecture or web architecture, whether it is Unicode compliant or non-Unicode compliant, everywhere this model is working. For example, in India, two purely uh, Indian origin um, ILS like Soul and Lipsys are following this model. If you go to the uh, you know uh, ILS of foreign origin, so Koha, Evergreen, Virtua all are following this model. And uh, this model is very fundamental, simple and the beauty is that you can go for atomic structure of any library system and quite successful for the last 30, 40 years of library automation. Thank you.